Tonight we hear from the people of Lake Katai, a town it seems that our council is absolutely determined to place under constant siege. I mean, in all seriousness, these people really do seem to an outsider to be up against it all of the time. If it's not a battle over the lake itself, then it's facing off with council who are doing their best to enforce this stupid nonsensical plan that they are calling a forced retreat or a planned retreat. Don't listen to the reports that council have scrapped this idea. Those reports aren't true. In fact, Port Macquarie Hastings Council is still doggedly determined to force residents to sell their land because of supposed rising sea levels. In the studio tonight, I'm joined by the very people affected by this planned retreat. I mean, even the name is an overreaction, isn't it? Stephen Hunt, you're one of the many people doing battle with council on this issue. You say that there's a much more sensible, a much more sane uh, alternative to council's plans, and I want to hear about that from you uh, very shortly. But before we do, I want you to give me a sense of the mood in Lake Caddo. I mean, this has been a long-standing dispute. What is the mood down there in that neighbourhood? Well, I think uh, a lot of the neighbours and a lot of the residents down there are quite disillusioned on, on what is actually happening down there. Um, they're, uh, I think many of them are devastated by, uh, by what council are uh, trying, to, trying to do to them. Um, they're angry at, uh, at what is, what is uh, taking place. And uh, I think they, you know, they're they're quite bewildered in what is actually happening down there due to uh, uh, you know a non-understanding of why we've got these issues that uh, that council are forcing upon them. So now at this point we should bring people up to speed about the ins and the outs of of, of this issue, and we're going to try and keep this as simple as possible because it has been quite complex. Steve, this all started some years ago, as I understand, when council slapped restrictions on some of the of the Lake Cadi homes. Uh, tell us what. What happened and basically what's the history of this? Well, uh, several years ago, uh, Council sought a, a study which would uh, take them forward with regards to how they're going to handle the coastal erosion issues down there at Lake Cadi. Uh, so they've uh, brought these uh, reports forward. Three years ago, uh, we, uh, we had a study down there which um, uh, determined that a reactive management strategy was the preferred option. Uh, we, we fought that uh, case quite uh, vehemently and we were very lucky to, to be able to win that. Um, in recent times, Council have also uh, been able to obtain another study uh, looking at four options uh, that are available, uh, three uh, protective options and one uh, retreative option. And uh, the study has been able to uh, find that the preferred recommendation is what's called a planned retreat. Okay, so of course we're introduced to this concept of planned retreat, which is basically a council plan which forces some residents to sell their homes to the government. Is that correct? Yes, what they've indicated is that they will buy one resident's home per three years um, at, a, at, a, at a ridiculous price, um, only if the funding is available, which pretty much means that it will take 51 years for all of the houses to be purchased in this particular area. And uh, by, that, by that stage, uh, the study finds that uh, there'll be no more houses left in there. They'll all be washed away anyway. So, um, so we, we just think that's just a hideous situation. And we're going to be talking about those more sensible alternatives that you uh, all want to talk about tonight very shortly. But I want to bring in some other people who've come into the studio tonight. Sandra Tobin, uh, what's your take on this? What is the mood in Lake Caddy night right now? What's the mood? What are people saying to each other in the streets down there? Well, people are really upset about it. Some of these people have been in their homes there for 40, 50 years. They're in their 80s. We've got widows. It's all upsetting um, every day. It's on your mind constantly. It, you just can't escape the worry. You go to bed of a night, you don't sleep. You're laying there night after night, chest pains. You think, am I going to wake up in the morning? And you just look at each other and... You just shake your head and go on, this is a whole heap of rubbish and everyone is upset. Everyone's stressed and on antidepressants. Um, You know, some people are even losing their hair through alopecia and worry. And it just goes on day after day. And, of course, 
you know, it's just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare for everyone involved. Sandra, do you feel, because Lake Cat Eye's down there on its own and sometimes I know the people down there feel displaced and disconnected from Port Macquarie, I suppose, and the whole region. Do you feel like there is support at the very least? Do you feel like people are listening to you? Do you feel like you've got the support of the community on your side? Well, I think the people in Lake Cat Eye are starting to realise that it doesn't just affect us. It's going to affect the whole town. And um, whatever happens to us, unfortunately, is going to flow on um, to them at some point because if this problem isn't fixed, where does it end? Mm. And it will just continue. And, Kylie, this is a precedent, isn't it? I mean, exactly what Sandra is saying there. It, not just the people in Lake Cat Eye, people all across Australia really should be very worried about the precedent that this could set across the entire country. Absolutely, Tim. Um, look, Lake Cat Eye is one of the hot spots that have been in, um, identified in New South Wales. Um, just down the road at Old Bar, they're in a similar situation, Woolai to, the, to our north. Um, we're not alone. Um, I guess as as local um local lake cat eyes like like cat irons if you like um we we just feel um i guess displaced from from the from the port macquarie community and feel like we want the majority of the the local community to get behind us really. i think most people don't even know what's going on down there That's i think the you're funny right thing. i really don't it's as scandalous and outrageous as this decision or this proposed plan of action is not enough people know about it. And then as you were just saying, Sandra, if, if people do know about it, they think, oh, it doesn't affect me. It does. It affects every one of us who lives on the coast. We've got to take this very seriously. Uh, now, Malcolm McDonald, you're in here tonight. You're another Lake Cat Eye resident. We spoke to a gentleman, Malcolm Roberts, not so long back. He suggested that um, all of you down there in Lake Cat Eye are just pawns in a much bigger game where global warming is being used basically as a scare tactic by the government to seize land. What's your response to that? I don't necessarily think that it's a scare tactic to seize land, but it's hard not to think that you're insignificant within the mechanism of government whilst they're making decisions and you have a great difficulty in having any say. But this is what we're here tonight for, to get our message across mm. and uh, urge people to fill in the questionnaire forms and get them into council so as a community attitude can be seen by council. It's like everything, it's the waiting that is most difficult. And it's been a lot of waiting. It's been a lot of waiting. Now, Steve, council tell us the planned retreat, selling the land back to the government is the best option to this alleged problem and I say that alleged problem quite deliberately but you say there's a more sensible solution can you tell us about what the people of Lake Cat Eye want to see happen? Well we would like to see a, uh, a revetment which is a sloping uh, rock wall placed on top of the existing coffee rock structure that's uh, down there um, we, we believe that that will uh, not only retain the embankment uh, it will protect the road um, protect the dunes and also protect the houses. So it's a win-win situation for uh, for everybody's concern. Sounds expensive. Well, it's it's it is going to be expensive. Uh, the the ratepayers are going to have perhaps two options. They're going to have one option where they pay for the uh, purchase of uh, of the residents' homes, and that's going to be a cost of something like eleven point four million dollars. But the real cost to build a revetment um, along Illaroo Road to be able to protect everything is going to be a roughly about $3 million. So, so ratepayers are going to have to fund, unfortunately, one of those options. And I just think it just makes a lot more sense, a lot more common sense to, uh, to only spend a, you know, a third of the money and uh, to fix the problem. Now, because I'm not from down there, is that view that you just voiced there, that option, is that the one that most people in Lake Cat Eye would like to see adopted? The people that I talk to down there, and uh, I've certainly been uh, talking to a lot of the community, have uh, have really given overwhelming support towards that sort of structure and uh, believe that uh, the long-term uh, benefits to, to Lake Cat Eye will be certainly significant. So to put to put a rock structure in like that will, uh, and the report uh, study that has just been handed down has indicated that that structure will protect the area for a, for a minimum of 50 years. So we think it's a worthwhile structure, that's for sure. So if it's so worthwhile and so well supported and so cost effective when in comparison to the other plan put forward, why aren't council taking this on board? Why aren't they running with this idea? 
Well, it's difficult to know what the agendas are in a lot of cases, um, and you don't know what the the agendas are of uh, people in, uh, in in Sydney, in some of the um, environmental places in Sydney. So, yeah, we we, uh, we really uh, don't fully understand the reasoning ourselves, and we don't uh, fully understand why the planned retreat option hasn't been initially discounted. So, uh, you know, it is, it is uh, extremely bewildering from a resident's perspective. In a more general sense, Malcolm, do you? Uh, this is all about um, global warming. They say the, the seas are rising, and this is all about erosion. Is there a general belief down there in Lake Katai that that is even the case? That there is even a problem in the first place that needs to be addressed? Uh, Council have gone on record with uh, saying that the present problem has got nothing to do with global warming. It's a matter of erosion of the uh, coffee rock, which unfortunately is um, reasonably soft. But uh, having said that, it's a very slow process what's happening there at the moment. So if I went down to Lake Cat Eye and spoke about this, are there people there saying that there isn't even a problem that needs to be fixed or is it generally agreed that we do have a problem? Oh yes, we definitely have a problem. Um, any sort of erosion anywhere is a problem, whether it be coastal or anywhere else on rivers. But um, the problem can be fixed quite easily with the revetment wall and we have time to get the study in place, get the design done and the costings done and to build that revetment wall. Okay. Okay, the big question of the night, uh, Steve, I'll hand this one to you. What's, what's your plan? Um, clearly not to retreat at this stage. Uh, what recourse do you have? Well, we don't have any recourse. Uh, pretty much once they, uh, once council make this decision, it's uh, pretty much binding, which is quite a disappointing outcome as far as we're concerned, especially if it's in, in our negative. Um, you can't take it further. N- well, once they get to a uh, to a management plan, uh, pretty much uh, that's, that's it. That plan gets uh, sent off to the Minister for Gazetting and uh, it's pretty much out of our hands as far as that's concerned. So... Um, you know that will be uh, that will be a devastating situation if that occurs, uh, and I think a very unnecessary situation. So, from a community's perspective, uh, we're, we're fighting hard. We're uh, we're talking to as many people in the communities we possibly can. We're uh, you know encouraging the community to uh, to forward submissions to to council. Um, so specifically, how can our listeners help? Well, I think that the first thing they can do is they can go to our website, uh, which is www.savelakecatai.com. And on that uh, website, they'll be able to uh, download a online submission form uh, and they can complete that and then send it off to, uh, to council. So that would be one thing that they can perhaps help us with. Um, and uh, get involved. Uh, you'll see us at, uh, at markets. You'll see us, uh, you know, standing, having stalls out the front of um, shopping centres uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. So if you see us out there, uh, come up, say good day, uh, get involved in, the, in the, all the issues, uh, sign a, a submission and uh, take an interest in what's, uh, what's actually happening in the community. And hopefully people will understand that this affects every person who lives in a coastal community and that's not just the people of Lake Cat Eye. You'll just happen to be in the firing line at the moment. Thank you so much for uh, coming in to all of you tonight. Uh, very generous of you to share your time. I think that I think you actually can win this one. I really do. Is there a general sense that, you know, you, you can win this one? Well, one would certainly hope so. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said, I think. Give us a call tonight on 6585 3456 is our telephone number. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. You're listening to the Time to Talk program.